Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's gospel taken from Matthew chapter 21, Jesus is in the temple speaking to the chief priests and elders who've just denied uh, knowing whether the John the Baptist's ministry was from God or not. In their refusal to answer a direct question about John, Jesus approaches them indirectly with a parable. He speaks of two sons of a vineyard owner, the owner's God himself. The vineyard is an allegory for doing works of righteousness. It stands for being faithful to God and sharing in his saving work. As a side note, the word for vineyard in Hebrew is kerem. Remember, Jesus himself is called the vine. He is the vine of the vineyard. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. John 15, 1, I am the vine, you are the branches, he says in John 15, verse 5. So in antiquity, vineyards were considered a sign of divine blessing. And their absence was a metaphor for divine judgment. We see that, for example, in Jeremiah chapter 35. So if Jesus is the vine of the vineyard, that, then he's saying that divine blessing comes only from one source. It comes from him. And then from him, the vine, it comes to us, the branches. And then through us comes the fruit of the vine, the wine which gladdens men's hearts. If you want to use the words of the psalmist, Psalm 104, verse 15. The wine is a symbol of all spiritual blessings that come to the world through the church. So we are an integral part of Jesus' redeeming work. There's more we could say about the vine and, uh, and the wine. For example, we can reflect on the marriage feast of Cana in John 2, but we will stop here for now. The owner of the vineyard in today's parable, the father, tells both of his sons. He says, son, go and work in the vineyard today, Matthew 21, 28. Every waking day, the Lord invites us to work in his vineyard. He calls us to unite our will to his will. He calls us to be faithful to his commandments, to practice virtue instead of falling into vice. He calls us to repentance and sorrow for our sins. He calls us, as Jesus says, to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him. Luke 9, 23. Every morning, every day, the Lord says to us, son, go and work in my vineyard today. The first son in the parable initially refuses the request. He says, I will not go. So as he first refuses the blessing of working in the vineyard, but then some time passes and he has a change of mind and a change of heart and does what the father asks him to do. The son refers to sinners who at first say no to God, who reject him and his authority, but who later on in the day, meaning later on in life, they repent. And Jesus is specifically here talking about the Jews who repented of their sins because of the preaching of John the Baptist. For example, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, whom the religious leaders thought were the worst of the worst kind of people. The second son in the parable symbolizes the chief priests and the elders who honor God with their lips, but whose hearts are far from him. Isaiah 29, verse 13, their actions don't line up with their words, and they rejected the preaching of John the Baptist, unlike the tax collectors and prostitutes who welcomed John's admonitions. Notice how the second son's even respectful in what he says to the father. He calls him sir, which is kyrios in Greek, which is the word for Lord. He says, I go, sir, and yet he doesn't go. He doesn't do what the Father asks him. It reminds us of what Jesus says in Luke 6, verse 46. He says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I tell you? To put it in contemporary terms, the second son represents those consecrated to God who give lip service to the faith, but who really don't believe what the church believes, or who really don't put into practice what Christ teaches. We can say that the second son also represents those who superficially call themselves believers, but they don't repent of their sins. Their hearts truly are not with the Lord. They think and they act according to the standards of the world and the mass media and the secular culture and academia, not according 
to God's standards. The irony of the parable is that the serious sinners, those who are symbolized by the first son, they were open to the message of repentance. They welcomed the fiery preaching of John the Baptist and the no-nonsense preaching of Jesus as well. But those who you would expect to respond to God's call first, in this case the religious leaders, they actually turned away from God. They rejected the precursor of the Messiah, John the Baptist, and then they reject, rejected the Messiah himself. So two things to carry away from this parable. One, don't be afraid to share the gospel with big sinners. Okay, big surprises can come from big sinners. Uh, don't assume that they don't want to hear it. Your words may be what sparked their conversion. And two, let's take up our Lord's call every morning to work in his vineyard, the vineyards in our souls, where the Lord wants us to work with him to put order in our internal disorder, to be patient with ourselves and others, to be charitable and merciful in how we think and speak and act and react, to be humble instead of being self-righteous and proud. And the vineyard is also our interaction with others each day in our daily activities as well. Our Lord wants us to offer ourselves and our actions to him each day. He wants us to learn to interact with others in a way which brings honor to his name and honor to the name of being Christian and being Catholic. So if we have these two verses in mind every day, if we think of this son or daughter, go and work in my vineyard today, Matthew 21, 28, and Luke 9, 23. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If we reflect on and apply those two verses to our spiritual life every day, we will become saints and we'll do a tremendous amount of good as well. So may Our Lady help us to be faithful branches on the vine that is her son. May she help us to take to heart God's call to repentance and his continual call to conversion in this Advent season. Praise be Jesus and Mary.